All right, guys. We're back live again with another stream here. I hope you've all had a good weekend and uh, are well rested. I am uh, not yet well rested, but I'm getting there. A little bit of work I want to do here today. The um, the work I'm looking to do today Um, I want to get this look at system working. I did a little bit more work here on it and uh, uh, and started playing around with getting it working. Now this is going to be completely independent of the rig and the animation um, and should just be something that can get layered on top. Um, and I've, I've had to look at working, but not perfectly. And uh, in trying to fine tune it, uh, I've decided to completely rip it out and try and get it going again. Um, because this is something that needs to occur on tick, um, I'm, I'm trying to be very careful about what I put into this. I don't want to have uh, too much going on. Hey, Christian, welcome to the stream. And, uh, and yeah, so the idea... Um, there are several components I need uh, in order to get this working. The first of which is I need a totem. I need one of the objects that the kid's supposed to look at. That's going to be my target. Um, I need the bone from the kid's head, uh, which I'm going to use to make him look in, in any one particular direction. Um, and I need to pass some variables kind of from place to place. And so the system currently still has some... Um, leftovers, some holdovers here, <sighs> excuse me, from my first pass at doing this, and um, that's what I want to kind of, I'm, I want to make sure I'm not getting messy in, in, in doing this here, um, but what I'm going to do, so I've got, this is my fine mirrors here, and you know what, I don't, I don't need this, so what I want to do is just make sure that my nearest is working, I had this working yesterday, um, and I want to make sure that it's not broken again, because I've stripped so much out of this. Hey, Brett. How you doing? I'm going to throw this in here and do this. All this is is on tick, find the nearest totem, and then we're just going to print whatever the nearest totem is to the screen. Now, one of the reasons that I, again, that I had this working and I ended up pulling it out is that I kept getting an error in the world when I was playing it, and I couldn't figure out where that error was coming from. And then it occurred to me, and I realized what I had done wrong is my persistent map issue here is what had boggled this. Um, so I've got several maps, right? The persistent map contains all the other maps. It's like a parent map, and all of the children live within it. And the problem is, is twofold. So first, right now I'm in the persistent world, which means when I hit play, we will see the menu. There's my error. So already I'm full of errors and it can't find a totem. And that's because there are none when we're in here. And so that's a little bit of an issue. So what I need to do is I need to do a check to make sure that we're allowed to check for totems. And that's what this little system was meant to be here. So I've got a variable inside of my game instance that just says, are you in the menu? And if the answer is true, I want to do nothing. And if the answer is false, then we can go find the nearest totem. Now, if the answer is true, I still want to continue and do the rest of what the system was doing. So let's do that. And let's see if we get anything better here. So I'm going to hit play again. And I'm in the menu. If I hit escape, no errors. So that's, that's beautiful. That's, that's kind of what I want. That means that the system is now currently working. And it's not checking for the uh, the totems. Now, when I enter game, when I do this, and I hit the play button, so what's happening when I hit play is it's loading up or streaming in the next map. And now you can see it actually is looking for the nearest totem, which in this case looks like is totem 33. Now, when I get near this guy, you can see it's now totem 18 or child, um, child master 18. If I go here, there's 33 again. There's 25, 26, and as I just walk through here, you can see that those numbers change. There's 32, over here we have 6, and so that's kind of the idea. There's 10, as I approach, approach over here, 
we have three 11. And so that system is working. It actually is tracking which totem is the closest to me. And more importantly, it is not throwing any errors. So that's good. That means that this system is correct and this is spitting out that totem. The next thing that I want to do is I want to then pass whatever my target is, my look at target, into the game instance so that I can track it. So if I go to my blueprints here inside of my game instance, I have a nearest totem um, variable that I've made. This is a uh, global variable into the eyeball here, meaning that we can see it. And it's an actor type, which means um, if I go back in here, once we find out what the totem is, and I don't, I don't need to print this anymore, but once I know what the totem is, we're going to go and throw this into that section. Now, ideally, uh, I would like to do this without having to cast again. Um, because this is on tick, it would be really, really important uh, to not do that. Um, but again, I, I need to do this here. So we'll, we'll try and see this. I, I worry that, that I'm going to bog down the system. Uh, so we're going to find the nearest totem. Once we have said totem, we are going to cast um, to the game instance. And then once we're in the game instance, I'm going to drop this down as the game instance... We are then going to set the target or the um, nearest, what the hell, nearest totem. There it is. So that's the variable that exists inside of here, nearest totem. And so I'm going to then say, hey, hey, this is the nearest totem. And we're going to say cast and throw this in here. And now this can go back in here. So what that did is it used the, well, do this here. It used the character blueprint to find out where the nearest object to the kid is. And then it once it knows what that object is, it goes and throws it into here, right here, nearest totem. So let's go have a run here at this. And again, I'm not printing now to the screen, so we won't see any writing on the screen here. But what I'm checking for is errors. So I just want to walk around and make sure that we have a couple of totems that have come to play. So I am now getting an error. Um, and this error is saying access none trying to uh, read property call function array get item uh, blueprint character find nearest totem find nearest totem set distance so that is in here so inside of this function that I've created to find the nearest totem um, it's actually throwing back a null when it tries to figure out this distance so we are getting all actors of class. These are all the objects in the world that are the pickup items. We're putting them in an array, and then we're getting a distance from the player character to that item, and we're setting the distance as a variable. Now, the problem that seems to be coming up from that, and I'm just going to open up that log again. Uh, where are you? Uh, details? My phone just vibrated in my pocket and it startled me. The unknown. Uh, developer tools log. Output log? Is it the output log? I clicked out log. Out dot. Oh. That might have actually crashed Unreal. I don't think Unreal is going to recover from this. But anyway, that's that's where my problem is right now is the the system the system is returning a null and it didn't a second ago. There it goes. Okay. So that's my output log. That's not what I need. It wasn't the output log. We can close that. Anywhere I roam. Uh message log? That's it. So it's telling me that uh, it accessed none, meaning something that I was asking for came back and said, nope, nothing here. Um, on get item, which again, if we go in here, there's my get. So it actually said it found nothing when trying to find the blueprint items. So that's a little, that's a little worrying. Uh, 
that definitely should not have returned none. Now let's go back into the event graph. I just want to see where I'm calling this here. I'm calling it a tick. Move this over here a little bit. So I'm calling it on tick, which is where it should be. I might just try and put a, um, a check to see if this object is valid. Inside of here. So right here, I'm grabbing this item and trying to, uh, trying to get its distance. But maybe what I need to do is, outside of this, just check and see if it's something that's valid. Um, and if it's not valid, then we won't do anything. So I'll put this in here, I'll put this in here, and then we'll put this in here. So that's now going to make sure that actually something did come through that system before it continues. And if not, it does nothing, right? It doesn't go anywhere. So let's see if we get an error again here while doing this. So we'll let it load. I want to make sure that we're in the level. And no, no errors. So hopefully that means that that system is now working. So we've got a little catch here just to make sure that, um, that what we're trying to do doesn't break the system. Now, I do, I do actually want this to continue through when it does find totems. So maybe what we'll do, that's find nearest totem. We'll close that. Um, why don't we, at the end of this, now that we know it's all been said and done here, let's do a print here, and let's see what, what comes back, okay? So, print, and we'll just shove whatever we told the nearest totem to be inside of here. So again, inside the menu, we shouldn't see anything printed on screen, there should be nothing there. And as I hit play, we should now start getting a list populating here. Of the nearest item so there's object 33 and as i get here it turns into 18 and 33 again there's 25 so yes the system is working quite nicely so that's good that is good that is good so that means that this is continuing to go um after that little issue good so oops don't do that don't do that don't do that so we're going to save this. And now I believe that should be it for my character blueprint. I think that's everything I need in there. And the next thing that I'm going to need to do is go and throw... Um, so I've got this little system in here. And look how I'll give it through what this does. I'm going to send a blast on the, um, on the Discord channel that I'm live. Um... Okay, so typically what you get here, let me delete these guys or just break them and get them out of the way. So this is the stuff that I've added. So this is typically what you see in, uh, in a regular um, system where we have the state machine and inside here it's the set of animations that can play. And I really, I only have two. I have an idle and a run. That's the only thing I'm doing in this. Um, and what I've got is, ooh, there's a look at in here. Let's delete that. Okay, um, there's my event graph, idle run, default, where's my anim graph, this guy, there it is. So inside here, this is that state machine that handles what the player is currently doing, and then this is what poses the character to match whatever's in there. So what I want to do is I want to make some changes between what the state machine says the character should be doing and what the character looks like in the end. And that's where I've gone and created these nodes here. So the first thing that I did is I created a variable called head rotator. Uh, and this is a rotator. It's going to con contain rotation animation information or rotation information, not animation. And these are just X, X, Y, Z values that you would get, uh, like inside of 3ds Max or Maya, where you have a rotation. You know, 90 will turn it halfway to one direction. And what these do is they will change whatever they're plugged into. So I've got a transform bone node here. 
The transform bone node is um, going to take one of the bones in the character and it's going to transform it. And right now I have the translation turned off. I don't want to move the bone. And I've got the scale turned off. I don't want to scale the bone. I just want to rotate it. So I have some rotating here. We are going to add whatever rotation I do to the existing rotation. Okay, we can either replace it or ignore. Um, and I want to make sure that this is happening in world space as well. So the idea is that we, and these guys here, I didn't create these, they're automatic. And so what this does, if I go and plug this in here, if I go put this here, and we say out of the state machine, let's go and rotate a bone first. And you can see this is what's going to convert from local to component. And then it com converts in the opposite direction here, component back to local to go in here. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to now make a modification to that bone. I'm going to compile this. And if I grab my rotator and I go into his X position and I type in 90, he's going to look down 90 degrees. And that's because I've now told the bone, hey, 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 you should go and do that. And so that's really, really cool that I can do that. Um, if I go back into that rotator and we put this back to zero, he'll look back up and let's do, let's say, negative 35 and he'll look up. Now, this is just his head bone, which is why he's looking so terrible right now. None of his neck is moving. And so what I should probably actually do is create another duplicate of this, like this. And what I'm going to do is I've got this head rotator thing here. Um, and what I would like to do is actually just half the rotation that's going in there into this. Um, but if I take this one and I go and change that joint to neck like that, we'll recompile again. You'll see that his neck moves that amount and then his head moves that amount. So if I take that head rotation, instead of 35, we bring it to, say, 15. You'll see that he's looking up a little bit more naturally now. His neck is bending as well. Um, which is, you know, that's that's kind of what you want. So uh, it would be really good to get rid of that. Um, to actually take this rotator and whatever the value is in here, split it amongst these two things. Um, and so that's that's something I got to do. I got to work on the math uh, to figure that out, to split these things. Um, I don't think I want to just divide it because I think the math can get a little bit funny there. But what you can do is you can actually use this alpha channel here as well. Um, and what I could do, so if I take this out of here, I could set this at 0.5. Well, let's come on now, 0.5, and set this one to 0.5. And now whatever that, that value is that goes in here is going to get split between those two bones, which means we'll get a far more um, natural-looking split. So if I do 90, if I type in 90 here, um, ooh, that actually is not doing what it should be doing. Let me do this again. There we go. So 90 now, you can see, is actually split between his neck and his head. So it's giving me a little bit of a better a better rotation. So if I were to do something like 15 degrees down, um, you know, we're actually getting a total of 15 degrees down. But it's being split half here and half here. Uh, and this is really good. You know, I can actually put a little bit of this into his torso as well um, so that his, you know, his shoulders kind of slump down. Let's, let's see what that looks like. So if I grab another one of these... I put this here, like so. I'll bring this down again, and another one of these. I'll do. I'll do four of them. Uh, and the only reason I'm doing four is I like the math better than with three. Um, so if we go do 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and we go and change these. So this is going to be spine two, and we'll set this one to be spine one. And again, I'll compile this again. What we're going to see now is it's not just his head and his neck that bend, but whatever value I end up hugging into this head rotator. So instead of 15, let's do 90 so he's looking down. You can see that he's actually bending a good chunk of his spine. Now, this is obviously breaking him. Um, you probably don't want to have him look straight down at the ground like that. But let's say the maximum he can look down is 45. You know, this isn't too outlandish. It's maybe a little overly painful. Um... Maybe 30 is a little bit better. But yeah, you can see 
you can see that I can actually make him look down quite comfortably like this. And I can also take this and set it to, let's say, negative 15. And he'll look up. And again, that negative 15 is now split amongst these four bones. And so we're getting a really nice rotation from this, which is quite nice. Now, the other thing to take into account is that that's just the X rotation that I've been rotating. And if I go put in 85 here, this is going to rotate him sideways. So if I go put the camera back behind him here, let's set this back to zero. So this is where the camera is going to see him from. This is that back view. And now what I have the ability to do is have him look right and left. Now, again, you want to be careful here because he's, he's going awfully strong against his pelvis. But this is also, I mean, not a very good animation. Um, but you can see how, like, we now have this, like, twisting and looking behind him type thing. Now, the good thing is that I can set a maximum value that these things will hit um, so that they don't try and, and, and over-rotate so he doesn't look, you know, 180 degrees behind him or whatnot. And the idea is that I can actually use this to figure out what that is. Um, 65's not bad. But anyway, something like that. Let me compile this again. Let's zero this back out again. Uh, I do have some texture work to do on him too. That seam is still overly present in him. There's some, uh, some issues with one of his textures. But anyway, um, this is going to do that, which is quite nice. Quite nice. Okay. With that system set, that he's now going to twist and move around here as I do this, the next thing that I want to do is, this here is his event graph. This is uh, when it's going to update the animation. And the idea... Um, let's see, where am I doing this here? That's that. That's that. Okay, so we don't need that. We don't need that. So here, we are getting the closest totem. And what I need to do... I'm not digging that song. Um, and so the idea here is to now... Um, merge these two things together. So where we have the nearest totem to where the character is, um, we now want to set up a system where we take the nearest totem and we say, hey, you, you need to use this thing. And we start plugging it in here. Um, and so this thing makes his head rotate. This thing finds out where the nearest totem is. And what we need to do now is set up a function that we can call at the end of the event graph back here somewhere that is going to then implement these two systems and merge them together. Uh, the way that this works is that I'm going to, uh, and I've already got like some of the nodes in here from when I was playing with this before. The idea is to create a new function like this. Uh, we'll go and rename said function to Come on, you. Are you not? There we go. So this is going to be look at target. Like so. So this is going to be the look at target node here. Uh, new function. Why did that look at target? Okay. So apparently that name is in use somewhere. Um... Look at nearest totem. Holy crap, I haven't heard this song in like 20 years. Okay. So this is the, um, this is where the system is going to take place. And the idea with the system is that I need to essentially grab everything that is going on and implement it in this, in here. So take these two systems and merge them together. So the way that I'm going to do this is by um, doing a couple of things here first. 
So, uh, let's... I'm just looking at my notes here. Oh, uh, there is one more thing that I've done uh, that is important to note uh, in getting this to work. Uh, animation, let's go to the skeleton. So in my character's skeleton uh, on his head right here, um, I have a look at target. And this is just a, uh, a little nub, a little bone uh, that was placed here um, inside of the system. <clears throat> this is essentially a null. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Sockets are really useful for attaching things to, like weapons, uh, glasses, and things like that. You know, if you want an attachment on your character, you can use a socket to do it. The reason I'm using a socket is that right now, the socket is a child to the head bone. Uh, it's supposed to be a, target, a child to the head bone. And what that means is that right now, wherever the head is positioned and rotated... Um, you can see that rotation here is negative 6.74. And if we go look at the look at, um, it's all going to be zeroed out, but that's because it's inheriting everything from that bone, right? So this thing is not rotated or moved away from where that bone is. The reason that that's important is that means that we now have a position for where the head should be in the default animation, right? The kid's looking forward. That's where his head actually should be. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to blend in towards that system. Um, I want to blend out of it so that the kid looks. And I want to blend back into it so that when he's done looking, he kind of looks back again. And so that's kind of the idea. So I need to do a couple of things here. Um, we're going to need to get the socket location of the character, uh, of that bone. So in order to do that, out of here, we're going to cast to bp underscore uh character selection game character so this is my character class and as that we are going to get our socket location uh get socket location and uh that is this guy here look at target node Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to find that socket for me and put it right there. So this is kind of like the before position of where the head is, um, which again is super useful, right? I can use that as a return point at any one point in time. Um, we also need uh, to get the actor location of our player, I believe. Uh, of the look at target. So this is the starting position. The other thing we need is our look at target. Um, oh, this is not. Let's get player character. Player character. And we're going to cast that so that this system works. Okay. The other thing that we need to do is we need to cast to our game instance. So I'm going to get the game instance, game in instance, and after this system, we're going to cast to game, let's cast to dp underscore c sg game instance. So this is the instance from a game class, which we're going to put here. And from this one, we are going to pull this out and let's... Uh, what do we need? We need the position of the nearest totem. Couldn't remember what I called it. So get nearest totem. Then we are going to get world get location. Get actor location. Okay, so now we know where the character's head is. And we know where the thing that he's going to be looking at is. So the next thing that we want to do is do a look at with this. Uh, in order to get to a point where the, the two things, like this is the starting point, this is the finishing point. So I'm going to right click. And we are going to find look at rotation. And the find look at rotation, the target is our target. 
and our character's head is the starting position. So this is going to create a rotator for me. So, so far, no errors, which is good, which is good. That's what we want. The next thing that we need to do is to now add this back in. Now, there's a little bit of a weird problem that happens when using these rotators, which is the the values that we have. I don't have the system open anymore. The viewboard? No, it's it's in here. So the system works like this. So here's our, our coordinate system. It works in world space. So right now he's looking directly at us, which is zero. And 180 is going to look behind him. But if the character were to turn around in place, zero is still this direction. It's zero in Y. And so if he turns, his head will stay put. And 180 then becomes his face pointing the right direction. So what we need to do is we need to cancel out the rotation that's already there to end up getting a rotation that we then can use. And so that's what we're going to want to do uh, in order to kind of correct this whole thing and make this work in a much better way. So to do that, uh, I'm going to go create... Well, first, I'm going to break this rotator that I have. Um, let's pull this out and let's break this into uh, this... So this gives me our XYZ rotations, which are going to be super useful. Uh, that's not actually what I want. I just want to break it, not break it into axes. There we go. So there's our XYZ. These are floats, which is what I wanted, not vectors. Um, and that's going to be super useful because now I can actually play around with each of these things individually. And the reason I want to do that is that I want to negate one rotation in his head, which is the rotation we don't have, which is the turning your ear to your shoulder. Um, he's going to have the ability to do that, but when he looks at things, he'll kind of turn and skew his head. So I just want him to look and look up. I don't want to... Uh, I kind of want him to be able to say yes and no and not anything else. And so that's that's why we're going to do this breaking. We're going to actually zero out the uh, the pitch of his head so we don't, we don't actually need that. Okay. Um, the other thing that we're going to need here is to get our actor. Get actor... Uh rotation I might need the actor first uh, I think I can just use the player character here get rotation uh, yeah Get control rotation. That's I don't think that's actually what I want. Yeah, get actor rotation. That's what I want. I'm starting to get an objection. Get actor rot. There you go. No, no. That's what I want. Okay, so we've got the actor rotation, which is also going to be super important. This is the rotation of our character. And again, I'm just going to go and break this out to get our XYZs from this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate or subtract out the rotation that's already there. So let's deal with the... Uh, okay, I need to check which one of these things I want. Let's grab the head. So let's do the X, which is looking up and down, if I'm not mistaken. So here, let's let's set this to 30. Okay, so X is our yes and no rotation. So I'd look at nearest. Wait, was that broken? No, we're good. Okay. So the X rotation, which is called roll, is going to be the yes and no, his nodding of his head. So I'm going to take this one and we'll subtract what was already there rotation-wise. And that will negate that first thing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make another rotator out of this. So make rot. And that'll give us a rotation for that. So there. That negated what was already in his body. Now the other problem that we have is the negative versus positive um, rotation, which is also kind of an issue. And so we want to fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a delta rotation. And we're going to put the actor rotation in that. 
and the look at rotation in there. So this is going to give us a completely new node. We're then going to break this as well, and we'll get no wrong break. Just grab this one. So what this is going to do is allow us again access to that system there. Now all I'm doing again, we're using the X here. So I'm going to pull the X out and I'm going to remove negative and positive from it. So this just gives us a flat out value that we can use to, uh, to move his head. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to limit the rotation. So what I want to have, what I want to have not happen is when we're in game and he walks by something that his head turns so far that it snaps. And that's what this distance check, or that's not what the distance check is. Um, what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to check this value against that. So this is our role here. And I've got one here called max yaw. I'm going to rename this to max roll. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out. We'll get its value. Uh, this is just a, um, a variable. I'll compile it here. And you can see that I've got it set to 85. Now, this is we're doing the up and down um, rotation. So I'm going to set this to a maximum of, say, 30, which I think is going to work quite nicely. And all I want to do is just see if this is bigger than this. So we're going to create a... No... greater than float and let's put this in here so let's just check to see if the rotation that we're getting is actually bigger than the maximum we're allowed we're gonna create a branch and we'll just say there we go and that's going to allow us to then spit this out and this is going to come from here so i'm going to move this whole system down like so i'll plug this in here Okay, so that's going to do that, which is uh, lovely. The next thing that we want to do uh, in the entirety of this system here So the next thing that we need to do in this system is to now actually set the rotations. Um, so actually make the system rotate the, the kid's head. And the way that we're going to do that is we are going to, well, I mean, we're kind of doing it here. We're getting this rotation value here. We're just going to set this head rotator. So again, the head rotator is the node we're using here, right? That's where I've been plugging in these numbers. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to use these rotators to move that on, on its own. So there's a couple of things that I want to do. We could just grab this like this and say set and then plug our value into it and say, hey, look at that. There's your rotation. However, what's going to happen is that when the kid becomes um, close enough to an object, and I'm, we're going to go through the close enough thing in here in a second. What's going to happen when the kid gets close to an object is that his head is going to snap to it. just, And then he's looking at it, which... That's not going to be good. It's going to be very, very jarring and not look very good. So the idea is that when I want to, when it gets near, near enough to an object, I want him to kind of turn and look at it, like almost like he's noticing. So I'm putting a little bit of, of personality into what's going on with this. It's not just a, it's not just a snap and he's looking at it. So that's the reason I'm going to do things in a little bit of a different way. So the way that I'm going to do this is we are going to create a R uh, interp2. And what this is, is a before and after and how long you want it to take to get from one to the other. So that's kind of an easy, uh, easy fix for doing this. And the idea is that I just want to pull this value out here. And this is going to be our target, right? That's where I want him to rotate to. Where I want him to rotate from, well, we need is head rotation. And so if we grab the rotator, the head rotator, and let's get this and let's put this here. That's currently where his head is at. His head is at no rotation. So there's the head rotator. The next thing we're going to do is after this thing 
blends from here to here, we're then going to go and, whoops, not what I wanted. We're going to go and set this guy. And so that's going to be here. So that changes where the head was at. So it goes here. It blends from this position, zero, to wherever the new rotation is. And then it sets that to be his head rotation position. So if true, the character can look at something, let's use this system to blend into there. Next, if the character cannot look in a direction, this too is fairly easy to do. False. We're going to go and set this value again. Actually, yeah, let's do it this way. And what I'll do is I'll plug this in here. The only difference with this other one is that I'm not going to plug anything into the target. Because what that's going to do is it's going to take whatever the value of the rotation is already and blend it back into zero, meaning blend it back into no rotation. So his head should go back to normal. So that's kind of the idea behind it. Uh, there's a couple other things that I want to do here. Uh, I want to set a delta time in seconds. <clears throat> so we're going to get the get delta uh, world in seconds. And we'll just plug this into the delta time of both of these nodes. And what this does is it now gives me a multiplier here for how quick I want this to happen. Um... I'm going to put it at 1 for now, and we'll play around with how long it takes in a moment. I can uh, I can also put a, uh, a variable on this, and I can even set it to be like how close he is to the object is how fast it takes him to look at it. So that's kind of the entire system here. Um, that is going to, this function is going to make him look at things, and this is going to rotate the bone. The only thing that's missing is in the event graph, we need to now call this function. So look to nearest object. And this is going to go in here. So let's compile this. Make sure we don't have any issues. And I have a target node here. So I have something that, you know, again, we're looking to figure out what we're actually looking at in terms of that target. Now, where that's coming from, uh, I thought I had an input in there. It looks like I do not. Oh, target self. No, that's fine. Yeah. So let's go have a look at this now and see if we're getting the proper system in play. So there's the kid, and you can see right out of the gate, he's turning to look at something behind him, which is an issue because there's nothing there. And as another system appears in front of him, he should slowly start to twist and look at that. But I can also see that that's not the right rotations. And so it's going to look like a, like a hipster jazz dude here as he kind of just bends all over the place looking at this stuff. So he's starting to look at things, but not, not in a very accurate way. So for instance, here is the, uh, the thing in front of him. And he should be looking at that, but he's, he's looking behind him. And again, it's not even the right... Um, it's not even the right rotation axis that's moving. And so this means that there's a little bit of an issue here with the, the world system versus the local system. So again, as he nears things, he should start looking at them, which he's, he's not doing in a very effective way. We're also getting all kinds of errors now here in saying that, uh, in a blueprint kid, look to nearest totem, look at nearest totem, the branch and the head rotator uh, are getting none in terms of their values. So we're going to have to also double check here that we are doing a, uh, a check for validity inside of this. So this is the setting the head rotator. And uh, what was the other error? There were two of them there, the head rotator and uh, message log, uh, the branch. Okay, so the branch, uh, that's fine. So here's the branch here. <clears throat> this is telling me that there's actually an issue with this. Oh, and I got the wrong rotator in. That would make a world of difference.
I'm going to make sure that I'm using the same system all the way through. I have a funny feeling that I am doing a world versus component kind of issue here. Let's go give this a world. Uh, a world? A whirl. Give it a whirl. See if it works. So this is the up and down looking, which at the moment we shouldn't really um, notice anything except for when we get to like the toilet paper. So there is an instance in which this totally should be working and he should be looking down, um, which he's not. And again, we're getting all manner of error here. Again, the branch and the head rotator are returning that there's an issue. So it's this branch. And it's this rotator. So this is telling me that there's an issue with this system. So I want to check the validity of as much of this as I can uh, to see that all this stuff is actually correct. Um, that's the player character. Let me try something else. Um... Let's cast to BP underscore. Oh, there's my game character there. I want to see if this uh, works a little bit better. I want to make sure that I'm actually getting the right starting position. Because again, the rotations are broken. So here he should be looking up at the poster. He's definitely not... So I may go change that rotator. Yeah, all of these things should be making his head move, and they're not. And again, I'm getting all these errors again. Okay, so let's go check our branch validity. I think this is where I need the uh, is valid. Let's add a print here. I just want to make sure that the system is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. This is the problem. I've built this essentially the same way that I did before. It didn't work before. And so it would be nice to be able to get a little... Let's print that. So as soon as the level loads, we should get our thing here. Master 8, Master 14. Okay, so this is completely working. It is listing the right object. Nearest totem. So the nearest totem is working in here. Uh, let's delete that. Uh, let's get this. And give that a whirl. Again, we'll make sure that the system is working. Now, hold on a tick. That shouldn't be returning anything just yet. So this is getting... Cast to the blueprint character. And the look at target node. What is the look at target node? Okay, stop. Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't be using this. That is the wrong system. That was from an older attempt. That's not what I want. I actually just want the mesh. This thing is broken. It's just this guy that we want. Root component. Uh, no, it should be the mesh. Uh, mesh. 
get get socket location get socket location and it should be for the mesh that's what i wanted okay let's plug this in here so it was returning nothing to this because there was no i wasn't actually targeting the socket so let's go take a look at the name of the socket and i'll just copy this here copy we can close this now and i'm going to plug that in to the socket name like so we'll compile this play this again okay and we should now get so that's not printing at all um yeah yeah the errors persist oh it's not yeah because i'm an idiot let's actually print it to the screen mesh walk okay why is it called mesh walk let's get rid of this let's do this i just want to see where that socket exists okay there's the xyz position it's because the character is in game six five four three two one zero Okay, so the couch is at about zero, zero, zero. The middle of the room's kind of over here-ish. That's fairly close to zero, zero, zero. It's kind of in between the shelf and the room and the, uh, and the, the couch. And so this is absolutely updating um, the position of the socket. So that's good. Let's go back in here. Okay, so I know that that system works. Um... Let's print the value of the bool and see what that gives us. Just as it is, right? Just as it is. Okay, so the bool is true. Hold on. Max roll, 30. Why is it true all the time? It's not making a lot of sense to me. Okay, um, that shouldn't happen. Let's print this. Okay, zero. Why is that number so small? Something, something is amiss.
break that minus that. Absolute value, which I check against the max. The max is 30. True should rotate the head, false should rotate it back. And that's my rotator. Okay, so something there might be something funny going on with the rotator. Let's let's try this. I'm gonna do a uh, I'm gonna do a little a little test here. See how this works. So I'm gonna go and rotate the Z eighty five degrees. So what that gives me is a sideways rotation. So yay. Let's put this back to zero. So he's not rotated. And that's the Z rotation. So I think what I'm going to do. World space. I might have to change. We'll check that. Anyway, I'm going to try Z. <laughs> Pardon me. Pardon, pardon me. Okay. So to check the Z, it's really easy. I'm just going to switch all my rotators um, to instead reference Z instead of, uh, instead of X. So combine this. I have a funny feeling that there's something really... Yeah, see, all the rotation numbers are right now. Okay, so we should get a side-to-side -side rotation now as he goes near things. is not the case it is however returning values right so you can see the brains right in front of him the number coming up is the number of degrees off center that that thing is so right now it says two which makes sense if i point at the shelf here it should be negative 80 negative 90 in that range and it is and if i turn them this way it should be the opposite positive values are getting to be about 90 or so and again if i get it to its back like so, uh, we should end up with zero. Now it's actually changed to that totem. Let's go to where there's fewer totems here. So again, if he faces it, like so, we should get a zero value. If he walks away from it, we should get a 180-ish value. Against this shelf, it should be 90-ish. And against this shelf, should be 90-ish. So all my numbers are working the way that they should be, which is good just not actually rotating his head. So it did, it did return errors again. Okay, so I know that this value is right. Let's not do that. Let's just do this. Delete that and kill this. Okay, so I know that that's right. Um, let's print the rotator. I should have just left this here. So it is reading the right value. Um, my max roll here, I'll leave it at 30, it's fine. Let's go print this guy. Now the reason that all these numbers are coming up here is that my character actually is spawning. Okay, so that is working as well. It's in here. Something in here is off. Let's delete this. And bring this here. And let's bring this to the end. Break that. Okay. Check this one. We need to look into preventing the character from spawning. It's interesting. 
the numbers have gone away. So they only, yeah, no, that, that should be what's going on. So I get a rotator when he should be able to look at it. When he turns his back to it, it shouldn't be trying to rotate his head. So it's only within a very small tolerance that he should look at it. Um, get a little bit bigger than that, but. So that means that that rotator is, is actually, let's close this, um, is actually getting set correctly. Uh, let's, let's delete these. So those things are working correctly uh, in the anim graph. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Let's set this to one. I'm just going to rotate one bone. We're just going to rotate his head. And we'll see if we can't get this to work. Let's get rid of that for now. We'll add complexity here as we get it working. So again, no numbers are showing up. Meaning he's not facing a totem. Oh, I'm not actually printing anything on the screen. I print here. Cannot. My game character. Get the actor rotations. I feel like... Well, that is working, though. The numbers were right. Look at target socket. Find the look at rotation. I've done everything I should have done. And I look to the west. Let's I'm gonna crank this up, make it happen a little bit faster. Let's just take a walk see here through the world. Yeah, there's zero rotation here being pushed in. And again, I don't know why it's accessing none. So we're trying to read property of nearest totem in the BP kit animation blueprint. Under the look at nearest totem graph, the look at nearest totem node. That function, that graph, branch. Why is that returning none? I wonder if instead of using the socket here, I can get the bone. Uh, get bone location mesh. And instead of the socket, let's just try That is socket again. Get bone. Don't be alone. I'm going to try getting the actor location and seeing if that's any different. It should be the socket, though. So still no look at, still tons of errors. Why is it returning nothing? Okay, so that system works. Let's close that. Oh, 
Let's try passing. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I'm going to try passing my character's own position in. And see if that helps in any way. Okay, uh, getting distracted. So the problem is that I know these things work. No, 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 no. Okay, it's going to start at the socket and trace out to the nearest totem. You know what I'm going to try? I'm going to try here. Let's print the location of the nearest actor. Zeros, meaning there's nothing in that value yet, in that variable yet. Map loads, we've got a value. The nearest totem to where I am now is probably the garlic. So as soon as I get near enough to the brain, the number should pop. Okay, so that's reading the right position. Yeah, so that number is right. So that's right. Hmm. I don't get it. I don't want to hear this. That's okay. See, I don't get why the branch is returning nothing, returning no. I don't have another branch in here, do I? No. So, okay. Let's try and kill that error that I'm getting anyway. So I'm going to get my game instance. And just before this, we're going to cast to BP. Do do get it. Uh, character selection game instance. We're going to throw the game instance in there. Do do get it. Do 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 get it. Get in menu and we'll branch this and put this here so i actually only want this to fire if it's false 
Do 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 do. Okay. Uh, I'm hoping that kills the air. Notice I'm not getting any. I don't know if my print's even connected. Yeah, it should be. Okay. We can destroy. Okay, so that is a much smaller string here. Uh, my guess. Uh. I'm wondering if with such a small number of errors that I'm getting right now. My print string is in here too. Where's my print string? It's in here. This. Searching. Seek and destroy. Okay, where am I getting the closest? Uh, no, it's in here. Cast to this. Connect a rotation. It's there. Nearest totem. Uh, where's my game instance? Nearest totem. I have a funny feeling this is not actually getting hit. Um... Okay, where's my tick? My tick's on character. Uh, wrong one. This one. There's my tick. Nearest totem. I did print this, and I know that this works. So something is happening between there and here. So is this the only thing I'm doing here to get that totem? It is. Okay, what I'm going to do, let's bypass this so we don't get the totem in here. I'm going to kill that, and I'm going to add an input, which I'm going to call nearest totem. Okay, so I now have a nearest totem, which I'm going to plug in here. Move these away a little bit so that that's nice and clean. Uh, okay, so now in the event graph, I've got a nearest totem. So here I've got my game instance. And we're just going to also pull out from here. And let's get nearest totem. And throw that in there. Just see if taking it out of the uh, taking it out of the function works. Okay. So again, my print branch and rotator aren't working. The fact that there are so few of them makes me think that the system is firing off before it should, which would be this guy. In menu. So let's let's track this guy. Um, he's in the game instance in menu, and his default is true, meaning when the game starts, we're in the menu. Which makes sense. We're in the menu. When the map, then oh oh, I wonder if that's gonna do it. Let's yeah, save all this. So when Cabot in the Woods loads, open level blueprint, on begin play, we're setting this to be false.
let's let's print this get in menu let's just see are we actually reading this in the right way I should say false here bunch Ooh. print string branch set rotator oh yeah i'm not in the persistent save it all save it all save it all Why is it happening? It doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, well, let's check for is valid here. And you're going to go in here. Hey. That didn't give me any errors. And I think the head look is working. Okay, so I think that condition fixed everything. Uh, let me go into my look at. I have a max pitch somewhere. It's max roll I want to edit. So I'm going to increase this to 85 since it's now not up and down. It's side to side. And I think, yeah. So he's now going to look at the totems. Bubblegum, poster, that thing, garlic, so his head snaps a little too much on the way back, notice I didn't get any ears, uh, so I'm going to bring this down so that his head more naturally rotates back. And I might slow the other one down too. I'm gonna to bring this down to five. I'm gonna set this back to two. Okay. Now I just wanna make sure from the persistent level so he looks there, looks up there, looks over there, looks over there. Okay, so all the looking is working. Lovely. Let's go back in here. Let's go back into the animation graph. So this is where this is happening here now. So I'm going to try and, again, split this across multiple bones again. And again, I'm just going to do that by splitting the math between these things. And we'll see how that works. Here and here. Okay. So, uh, we're going to do this all the way up. I'm going to start with spine one. Mm. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do one more. One more. You think we need one more? You think we need one more? Okay, we'll get one more. Okay, so this one is going to start with spine. This one is this one's going to do spine one. This one's going to do spine two. This one's going to do neck. And the last one does the head. And then what I'm going to do is where's my let's pull the distance out. Nope, not that. 
this. I'm going to rename this thing to um, split. And then take this and divide it by five, which meh, not divide by five, divide five. And I'll put this into each value here. It would be nice if I was able to just count these things and make this thing automatic, but whatever, this will work. Um, file this one there. Okay, let's go see how how bad his spine is here as he turns to look at things. Well, that's not bad. He can, he's he's very limber, this child. But again, that's a terrible idle animation, and I'm hoping when I get a more proper animation. Well, that's interesting. Okay, let's kill this. I know I'm not getting an error now. I'm going to load the persistent level back again. It's a great tune. I still have my print turned on, but uh, it's okay. Who doesn't like being a little turned on? Now I would like to also get the up and down working. Because again, having him here in front of this thing, I'd love for him to be looking up at the poster. And again, no errors. So I'm on the right path. So let's go kill my print. I think it's inside. It's in here. That guy. Okay. Okay, so the system now works. <clears throat> now... To add another rotation to this, all I'm going to do is just duplicate the system that's here. So again, this is doing my X rotation. And all I got to do is just do the system again and spit out the Y. So essentially starting here all the way to here. So we'll bring this down here. Like so. And this goes in here as it did before. This goes in here as it did before. Uh, this goes into A of the delta, that goes into B of the delta. Come down the river, come down the moon. We'll put this in the absolute value, and we're going to put this into the x value. And now what I'm going to do, so I don't want to use max roll here. I want to use max pitch. Max pitch should be like 20. Let's do 25. Whoa, 285 would have broken the shit out of this. Uh, let's do that. And we'll just grab an end. And this should make sure that both of these things need to happen. Uh, and I'm going to plug this into the roll. Not in here. Compile. Okay, let's see how this works. So we should have up and down as well as side to side now. So he was looking at the brain there on the chair. Looks at that. Looks at that. There's not a lot that are up above him. I do want to go over to the poster or the calendar here. Hmm. Uh, 
He's definitely not looking at that. Come to my window. Come to me. Uh, maybe this actually isn't the roll. Maybe it should be pitch. Maybe they're not in the right position. Because I've mucked around with them. Let's see if that works. Okay, so he's still looking at things. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. Oh, look at that. That's interesting, too. So he should be looking up at the antlers here. I'm going to go over to the uh, ice cube tray. Okay, I don't think... I think the end condition here is deadly. Because I think what's happening... Is that very rarely is he, a is he in a position where those things are above and beside him. So it's this is essentially making it of, of cone of vision. But I don't think that it's working properly with an end. And so what I might do... I might... I might do this. So let's plug this guy back in here. Actually, you know what I should do? You know what I should do is I should do the bottom. Pericles. I'm going to break the Z on this for a moment. Because I want to make sure... I want to make sure that when I do this, false. Yeah, see, he should be looking at the bull. Ooh, that sped the mouse up getting into the bull. That's not supposed to happen. Come on the river, come on way. Let's go to the anim graph. I'm going to try and switch these. Oh, uh, and to existing. That shouldn't, that was broken. That shouldn't have happened. There shouldn't have been multiple values in there. So it's printing false. I have another print somewhere. That's the in menu. Okay, I'm not in menu. Yeah, see, he's not looking up. Why are you not looking up, kid? Ba -bum -bum. Okay, I think I think I've got to get out of world. Let's try component. Yeah. Sometimes the logic can hurt my brain. Yeah, see, he should be looking down at this object. He's very clearly not. Mm, let's go try this one again. Yeah, that's not... It's not looking at anything.
this one in here and delete this. Okay, we'll get out of here. The rhyme. This goes in here. Oh. Okay. Give this a whirl. So this, I think this should do it. This has got, it's got them both separate now, so it's doing double checks. Uh huh. He's why is he looking up though? There's nothing there. Oh, hold on, hold on. He's looking down at that. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> I would say the rotator's backwards. Yeah, see, that worked. He was actually. Okay. So it looks like that. R this guy's backwards. And I don't think that this fits properly. Uh, can you combine rotators? Uh, combine rotators. See, that would do it. Let's put this in here. And this in here. And feed it into A. Target. Um... I don't need this. See, it's this check that I'm not sure what to do with. Okay, I think I'm going to do another branch here. Yeah, let's try that. So out of true, I'm going to create another branch. And true and true is going to go into this one. Uh, Shazbot. I need a third. Okay. So I'm going to put the combined one in here, the singular one in there, and none in here. Okay. So let's get the logic of this right now. So if both are true, it has to go to the middle one. If only the first one is true... Do 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 uh shit okay this is the first one this is side to side if it's true let's check and see i think i need two branches so if this is true he can look side to side then we're going to go into the one that does side to side. If this is true, oh wait, no, and this is false. That goes in there. If true and true, we're going to go in here. And then this one is zero, which should be false. In here and false in here like so okay 
Jesus. <laughs> I think. I think that's right. Survey says. Survey says, don't look at anything. Whatever you do. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He looked down. He's looking down. At no point is he looking in the right direction, though. True and true. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Oh, I don't think this is right. I don't think I want a third one. I think I do want the end. <sighs> Come on. As the music dies, something in your eyes and goes here, that goes there. Like it's there. I never want to dance again. How's it going, Rich? I didn't notice you coming in. <laughs> okay, so that is, he is looking down. But he's not actually looking at the object. See there, and he should be. Man, I'm getting my... I'm getting all my rotations broken now. He's backwards. This is the wor okay, it's the world issue that's going on here. That's what this is. Uh let's try now that I've changed my logic. Let's go switch this back. Component space. Let's go put this back to world space. Hey, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm trying to do busy work here. There's something on his shoe. What? He's got no shoes. Where does feet? He's why is he buried in the ground? What is he looking at? Oh, you're not supposed to lean like that, sir. Oh, he's all over. <laughs> I mean, yes, he's kind of looking at the hat, trying pretty hard to look at the hat. It looks like that. It looks like the space is backwards. Tonight the music playing so loud. I gotta figure out why he's buried in the ground too. Something something is a, an issue there. Let's try bone space. But now who's gonna dance with me? Okay, this actually looks like it's working. He's not looking at the uh, the dog tray, which is right behind him, which means it's out of his vision. That looks wrong to me. He shouldn't be looking that far down to look at the coin. Let's go look at these these again. Uh, hold on. I can test. I can test this. Let's grab this node. 90. So that's not a rotation I want. Okay. 
So the first one is up and down. That's good. And that's sideways. So it's... At least with bone selected, I should be using X and Y. No X and Z. That's where... This is gone mental. I should be grabbing Y. Okay. That's why he's bending all over the place. Well, now he's not looking at anything. Oh, uh, the values are backwards, right? This is roll. It's 85. It's 25. Oh, wait, why is this one Y? Wait, now everything's on Y. This should be X up here. X, 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 Y, 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 X. Y, Y, Y. Shift everything the wrong way. Don't get it. Okay. He looks human. Is he looking at that? He's not looking at that. What the Sam hell? Now he's not looking at anything. Okay, I'm going to put 85 for both of these things for the time being. We're going to go to the event. No, the Anim graph. I'm going to put these back to world. Okay, let's check my rotations again. 90 is up and down. That's the twisting one that I don't want. And that's the rotation I do. So, it should be X and Z using the world axes. And I should be using world axes because everything that I'm doing here with the subtraction is removing what's already there to negate the world axis, so that should be, that should be it. Should be being the operative words here. Not entirely sure it's accurate. Yeah, why is he not looking at stuff now? Now he doesn't look at anything. Because this is never being fulfilled. The logic is escaping me.
Let's see if I can figure this out. It really bothers me that his hat doesn't cast um, enough of a shadow on his face. It actually looks like his it actually looks like his face is is lit under there, and there should be and there should be shadows on his head. Tab LOD info. I need a physics asset to cast shadows, and I think that casts shadows on himself. So what I'm going to need to do is actually build something that is close enough to the shape I want. Okay, let's try that. Let's go here. Let's go to my character. And true enough, he does not have a physics asset. So I'm going to go create one. Create an assign. I'm one. Listen to <sighs> Okay. <clears throat> Let's take this guy, turn it into a sphere. Bring it up, scale it up to match his head. And what I need is a shadow that's essentially the brim of the cap. Pericles come down the road. I did name it sociopath. Okay. The odds of this just already being here. Uh add shape. Where did that go? Um, you made me king. Uh, where the hell is it? Neck. Add shape. No. Collision. I was just looking at it. Copy collision from static mesh. Sociopath. Hmm. 
Mm. Here, come join the murder. Come join with me. Just see if this works before I go through all the trouble of... No, 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 no. Why can't I duplicate this? There we go. Like Pericles, come join the winner, come join with me. Mm -hmm. Come join the murder, come away. I don't even know that this is going to work. No, that one. Okay, whatever. Let's save this. Uh, you go back into the skeleton. No. Mesh. <laughs> Shadow physics asset. Like Pericles, come join the murder. Come join with Mac. What's up, Rich? What's up, Bray? How you doing, brother? Uh, the Y looks upside down? What Y? There's a Y? What do you mean the Y looks upside down? So I'd say those things are, are actually creating uh, shadows now. Just not in the right place. So let's go try and move them. This guy. I 
didn't she tell me? Where do I go tonight? <clears throat> me. This can't be happening to me. Didn't say a word. Yeah, I don't think these are the boxes casting the shadows. I think that actually is his hat. Why the hell is the top of his head lit up? And when she left me for you. Okay, let's uh, physics asset. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Save it. Let's go see if this actually looks the same without it. She just walked away. Yeah, that looks identical. Take a look at the kid. Not all right, this was my worst love. And then she left me for you. What am I doing? Cabin in the Woods. Character FBX, FBX Kid. Hmm. I'm thinking there might be an issue with the geo and the hat, and that maybe there's no inside, but that's definitely not the case, man. There is an inside. Okay, I'm going to try something here and see if this works. Um, I opened up my eyes. Can't edit this one. And then leaves me for me. I need the rigged one. So I'm going to try and actually break his hat and see if that corrects the shadowing. This was my first love. And when she leaves you for dead. Uh, don't show this again. And yes, of course. We're going to do this. And we're going to uh, turn off the custom attributes. Uh, grow, 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 grow. Grow. Uh, not going to work. Okay, let's do it this way. Okay. Oh, one more. Okay. I know this is stupid, but we'll see if it works. Facts. Don't do it. All the other points. Ah, oh, you fucker. Mm hmm. Okay, I'm going to shrink. Add that back in. So the idea here... <laughs> I don't want to move the topology because it's, it's weighted already. I'm going to try that. And I'm hoping that just having a solid, solid shape fixes it. Export selected. And we're going to go put this over back. This one. Character. FPS walk. I'm going to keep this open in max in case this doesn't work, that it don't fuck up my shit. But I can go back to it. But let's go see what this does. Uh, skeletal mesh. 
re important. Okay, I just want to make sure that it actually did give me the new mesh, which it did. Okay. So he's got the new mesh. Let's go see if the new mesh casts a shadow. I'll just bring him back over to the same place here. I gotta figure out that seam on his neck too. Yeah, that does not fix anything. Oh, uh, you know what I I bet you and I I know what it is. I bet you. I think it's the subsurface scattering on his skin, and that self shadowing does not work on on that. Hmm. Yeah, see, he doesn't look bad in some instances. It's just when he's really near these lights. Anyway, why the hell is my system not working now with both of these things? Let's go back and try and get this system working. So it looks like I can get left and right working just fine, but up and down seems to be... Well, that was not... He didn't look at nothing there. Happened now. Yeah, see, now the look system's completely broken. What the f fudge sickles is going on here? Okay, let's break the entire second system. Stranger things unhappen to know. Uh, let's compile that. Let's make sure that X is still the one that I want. not X, it's Z. Because ah, I changed it. Shouldn't have changed it. I wouldn't have changed it. Okay. Z. 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 Everything else should be fine. I gotta stop bouncing around from coordinate system to coordinate system. Breaking my shit. Yeah, see, now he looks at things. Felt so lonely in your company. I wonder if there's a different kind of look at that I can use uh, going into the anim graph instead of using the transform node, actually looking at a look at node. Bone to modify, look at axis. And I'll move the Y, interpolation mode. Look at target. Has to be something on his skeleton. 
Make a diamond never happen, there will be but nothing. I don't even need that love. So rough. So this, this might be the way to go. Let's kill this and this. I used to know. Well, that would screwed me over. There was only something that I'd done. Okay, this is the animation blueprint. Uh, it's compiled. Instead of generating a rotation node, Body that you used to know. Uh. So I'm wondering if I can move. Game instance, branch, can I do this? Find the nearest totem. And then set the nearest totem here. See, I don't even think I need this. So what I'm going to try and do... Uh, let's see, socket... I used to know. I'm actually listening to uh, the Three Days Grace version of this, which was probably not something you listened to in high school. That's something that just came up this year. So unless you were in high school this year. Uh, okay. Oh, I want me inside of you. Let's try uh, UE4 uh, socket uh, movement. Uh, set socket location. Oh. So I don't think it's possible to move a socket at runtime. So I think what I need to do is I need a I need a I need a bone. Let's go back to this guy. Do 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 do. What's this? Head top end. Can I move this? And it doesn't break anything. Okay. Ba -dum -bum, ba -do -do. Feeling so small. So let's go here. The look at that I'm going to do, uh, animation graph. The look at is going to be the top of his head, head top end. Fly. No, that's the bone to move, head. The target is the head top end. Compile. So that's going to be a little bit of an issue. It looks painful, somewhat. I think it looks painful. Okay. Been guilty of living myself in the feed. So I think what I'm going to do here.
Three Days of Grace was a little earlier, but the um, someone that I used to know cover that they did just came out last year or this year. And then so small. So what I'm going to do in the character blueprint is move that bone. Head, top, underscore, end. So this. Uh, that's the game instance. Game instance. Why am I casting the game instance freaking twice? Can't we just do this? And this? Why the hell would you do that? Oh, I wanna be inside of you. Go, go have a listen to it, man. It's killer. I'm a really, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Three Days Grace. I like them. I like them a lot. I do. Uh, okay. Uh, set bone bone. Set bone location. Set bone transform. Bone transform. Can't move a bone? Down in a hole. Transform to bone space. That's not what I want. Uh, how about uh, get bone? Get bone. I'm control. It's socket. Why is this not working? Set bone location by name. Thank you very fucking much, Bastich. You're gonna go in here. You're gonna go in here. Uh, that's wrong. That goes there. This goes here. Okay. Get world get world transformation. That's not it. Mm -hmm. On this. And then we're going to set the bone to that position. The bone name. Mm -hmm. uh, fuck what that bone called. Head top underscore end. Head top underscore end. On is him. Uh, what's this? Is fine. Uh, target. Target. This is not a target. Uh, it's not a posable component. Therefore, must have a connection. Um, you. Not you. Uh, posable mesh component. Set bone location by name. The dead guy, world space. Um, and it's not this guy. Uh, get player character. Does that work? That doesn't work. Posable mesh component.
That's the nearest totem. Doom. Where's the mesh? Mesh. Is that not my possible mesh component? Posable mesh component object reference. Right? Isn't that good? Um. God damn it. Mm. The iron on is him. Uh, get phone index. That's just the index number. Ooh. I'm gonna kill and mono and none. across the land. I don't want the name. I don't want the number of bones. I don't want the parent bone. How do we turn a bone? Yeah, this is not what I want. Mm -hmm. God damn it. I widowed his wife. That's not gonna, can't use that, can't use that. Um, object is undetermined, make something to type. Type, type, type. Can I use the mesh? Kill. That's always going to fail. Posable mesh component. Let's go check out my skeleton here. This one. I hung my head. I hung my head. Let's go to there. I hung my head. Mm 
Mm, can I move a virtual bone? That would fix everything. Excuse me, music a day comes. Bring me to my knees again. God damn it. I'm on the outside, I'm looking in, I can see through you. Okay, so it's not in there. Set bone location by name. Uh, let's go see how you're supposed to use this thing. New E4, posable mesh component. Load in. Was for you. Add a posable mesh component. Okay, um, let's try this. Add posable mesh component. I'm on the outside, I'm looking in, I can see through you, the room inside you're ugly, ugly like me, see you the real you. Stuffed it down. Not sure this is gonna work. Here in bed, all alone. Okay, okay. Go through my logic here. Oh, I'm doing so much on tick. I'm looking in. Okay. Inside your ugly, 
ugly like me i can see through you see you're the real you Hmm. This only works with Bowman. Why would you ever want your character to just look at themselves? It doesn't make any sense. So the idea would be instead of doing a look at nearest here, I actually just update that, which would be faster. Add opposable mesh component. I don't have to do this here. Do, do, do. It looks like the posable mesh component is something that is outdated and something that they've moved beyond. It's a shame because that system would have been really flat, really fast. Just a uh, shame it doesn't work. And again, it seems to be limited to a single axis of rotation. Um, which it's no bueno either. Ah. <sighs> 
And this feels like it should be such a simple thing to do. Most of what I'm seeing online is not. Hmm. Can I get world location? Is that a thing? Let's delete this. Get type world location. Okay. That's not horrible. See, I'm wondering if instead of storing the totem in here, I just store a location. And that way, in my animation blueprint, now this isn't going to work. What other look at do we have in here? Look at, if I look at rotation, Look at function, target position, look at vector, right there. Might be able to use that. What else do we have in here? Get a look at target, set a look at target. Okay. Uh, get look, god damn it. Get look at target. Get world. Get transform. Get actor transform. Current transform. That's this guy. No, it's just right there. So if I can set that. This might work. Okay, so there's only one look at node. And it's going to look at a bone. And I cannot move that bone.
Uh, look at. That's not the right node. There's a look at that I don't see. Look at function. That's not it. Look at function. Look at find look at rotation. Neither of those is right. Wondering if there's variables here I can turn on. Interpolation. It's a location I want to look at. That. That's what I wanted. Set back. We're going to look at an XYZ. Holy shit, this might have... Oh, I'm going to feel so stupid. Have I done this a different way? Um, right now he's looking at nothing. <laughs> it's, it's no good. It's no good. Ah. Okay, no, I think this is going to work. I think this is going to work. Um, that's fine. not the up axis let's not use where's my world axis don't use local space that's not better use local space there's no original offset anyway uh can i now get so there's my world location Okay, let's go to here. Let's give myself another variable. This is going to be a vector. I'll nearest target location. It's going to be global. Uh, can't do it in here. There, I want to do this. No, this is at look at nearest. I don't want this. I want it in the event graph. Boo doo 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 doo. Boo doo doo doo. Boom boom boom. Delete that. Instead, you're going to get. Nearest target location. And then I need a target location here to set this to. Let's make another variable. And we'll call it local location. And I'll use this to store the data. Uh, true. Save. Now in the anim, I can pull this out, pop it in there, and I th think that should do it. Okay, let's let's go see how much I've broken. There's something a little wrong here. So he's pointing the top of his head at the stuff, which just means I have the wrong, the wrong axes assigned here. Wait, I'm not actually setting this to anything. 
Hold on, hold on, hold on. Nearest target location. Okay, now it's in here. Here's my event graph. This is on tick. Find the nearest totem. Get to this, get to this. Get the world location of this. And then, this is where I need to set. Uh, target. The hell did I call that variable? Nearest target. Uh, here. Set. Nearest target location. Oop. You can go in here. Oh, I don't need to do this. I don't need to do this. I'm doing I'm doing it here. Which means I don't need to do this here at all. Don't need these. They're not being used for anything. Right? We should still see the top of his head pointing at stuff. Broken. Yeah. Snap. That's good though. That's good. That's what I expected. Uh, in the Anim Kid blueprint, in the Anim graph, the look at, I can define which axes it looks at. And I think it's the Z axis that I need. So one here and a zero here. Recompile. And then I'm just going to need to interpolate off of this stuff. Is that normal? We can all do that, right? He's looking at zero, zero, zero. He's looking at the origin. Okay. He's looking at the origin. Why is he looking at the origin? Because that thing's not being updated. Okay. So I should set it here. Get world. Get. Get actor location. And then we're going to cast to the game instance again. Let's set it here. Uh, set. Nearest target location. Be this. Okay, no errors here. Means that this probably isn't actually doing anything. It's fine. Let's break this. Compile again. And let's go see if we can't get a better better axis axes here. Look at clamp. Interpolation time. Okay. I think it's this. Uh, let's set this to 80. I don't think I need a target. Access. The up axis on this character is head. of why the up axis is negative y did 
perfect. Look at axis is Z. That is correct. Let's reset these to what the default is. That's any better. normal right you guys can all do that right it just looks really limber look at that okay <laughs> okay uh set nearest location so it got nothing i think that's because uh i need to check in is valid here Actually, right, not that. It's right here it is valid. No, yes, no, yes, that was right. It is valid. Okay. Okay, and then we're gonna branch this. That should work. Okay, so I think that's setting my value properly. Uh, I don't need this open or this open or this open. Uh, I don't need this open. Let's go back here. Component to local. Okay, there's a blend goes by bool. That would be nice to play with. Blend pose by int or by bool. I think I want to do it by it or by float. There's no by float. Okay, I'll do it by bool. And this can go in here. And what this is going to do is this is going to give me the ability to define a uh, distance so that he doesn't try to look at things until they're within a certain distance. So he doesn't spawn looking way off in one direction, trying to look at, at a totem that he can't see. Um... I'm going to set this to two. Okay. And... Oh, that's broken. True. Else. Uh, this would go here. I believe. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? Uh, okay, I think it has to go like that. And that's fine.
Okay, so just let's make sure there's no errors. There are no errors, which is good. Go back into the animation blueprint here. Uh, let's kill this. Compile. Don't you dare look at zero, 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 my friend. Damn it. Not doing what it should. Okay. That broke the error. Find nearest totem. This is setting nearest totem. Which I don't need. Just need that. Let's, I'm going to do a print here to see if this is actually dating. I don't know. If So I've got this on tick, so we should see a string of three numbers here. Okay, so it is absolutely updating, giving me the nearest totem. Okay, so that number's right, which that's, that's lovely. That's what I want. That's right there. This is setting nearest target location. So that's in here. That means that this thing is now correct. So in here, this now does nothing. That's not even me. I have a local and references in here. So this is not being set anywhere. That's the issue. Okay. So what I need to do is in the event graph here, cast to, there's my game instance. We are going to get nearest target location and set I I just <laughs> and set this from here. Okay. Survey says. So it might not be the best place to be doing this. Maybe. Okay, I'm not in menu. Nearest totem is valid. And we're gonna get the nearest target location, set it. Okay, well, let's check the validity of this. Close to, I don't have a fucking clue. Dangerously close to, I don't have a fucking clue. It's funny, this is something I can do in 3ds Max and Maya in all of 8 seconds.
It's tied to the direction in which he's walking, which makes me think that I'm just screwing up the anim graph. Is there a... Let's just reset this whole thing back. That, that looks right. That doesn't doesn't look particularly healthy. Okay, so that actually broke completely everything, and it's not doing anything. So that is worth noting. Uh, I'm going to reset this. So he looks normal here. Set this back and see if it works. So So when it's positive, he looks up. It is, that is not doing what it says it's doing. Look at location. I want to modify the head. Axis is Y. Local space, don't use up. I'm going to turn it off here and go back to the default state. Okay. See, what I'm wondering if I don't, instead of doing all of this passing <clears throat> through the game instance, if I don't just try and cast this directly to the Anim Blueprint and force it through there, so that I'm not doing any of this. This is this is never getting fired. So let's delete all of this. Which currently does nothing. And then let's close it. Here we're setting this, which is in the um game instance. So why don't I instead cast to uh, anim vp kid and we're going to cast the nearest totem into that. That's not going to work. That's going to always fail. Uh, I need to get I'm good, man. How you doing? How you doing? So I think what I need to do here, let's put these above their appropriate branches, um, is to get the animation blueprint. Get anim. Uh, get yeah, 
Let's see if I do this. Let me plug this. Well, that's not what I wanted. It's the animation blueprint from this. Get anim Hmm. Data and you can't go in here. Put a mesh animation blueprint. Tag. Blender is, I don't know, Blender is one of those things that it's open source, which means there's a lot of people that work on it. And whenever you get a lot of people working on one thing, you get too many cooks and that tends to be a bad thing right nobody ever agrees on everything and so you end up with people being drawn in different directions based off their own personal biases which generally leads to not good stuff the only thing blender really has hey how you doing um the only thing that uh, blender really really has going for it is the fact that it's free And free is kind of a big deal, but I don't know that it's enough that it would like, I would, I don't think I'd ever have a need to switch over to Blender. Um, you know, I've, I've played around with it and it is rough, you know, it's very unrefined. Um, it tries to do a lot, you know, it tries to be Maya, it tries to be Max, it tries to be ZBrush, it tries to be all of these different things and in the end it does an okay job but i don't know why i would ever blender instead of zbrush i don't know why i would blender instead of max um you know while i have these software packages i don't i don't really have a need to to venture out in that direction um i found that most uh people that use blender use it because it was the free option when they got, got into 3d modeling um but i don't know of any studios that use it i don't know of um anyone beyond uh free uh places that you know um not free places but studios that don't have a lot of money you know uh, people just starting out or starting their own company um those are the people that i find use blender and um yeah you know um that's kind of my my feelings on it um i don't see a point in it um you know the the question could also be phrased uh, what do you think of gimp um gimp is a uh, image editing software like photoshop and again i have photoshop so i don't ever see a need in using gimp um Competition is usually a good thing that strives. It makes it makes companies try new things, and it makes companies want to try and stay ahead of their competition. Whenever you've got a singular company um, kind of doing the thing, then you know there's no real need to do that. Uh, usually, the the description or the uh, usually the um, the analogy I use is that. If you're in the market for a car and there's a dealership giving away a free Prius, it sounds pretty good. You know, it's, it's a free car. 
A Prius only really looks good because the Lamborghinis across the street are really expensive. But I already have a Lamborghini. Don't see much point getting the free Prius. And so that's that's kind of the the nuts and bolts of it, as it were. If that makes any sense. Okay. Um, I don't have a variable here for this. Maybe I'm going to do this in a different way. Uh, true, you just go here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, let's promote this. This will go here. So this new variable here is going to be called my local, no, this is called uh, nearest location, and we'll compile that, there should be no errors. So I now have nearest location, so in the anim blueprint, um, we're going to cast to the character. Casting the game in since then, I don't really need to do that. That's the thing. Like if you can't if you can't afford um, the Autodesk stuff, then you know Blender is a good option. You're just going to find that going from Autodesk is uh, it's terrible as I I constantly say Autodesk is. Um, you're going to find that. Switching to Blender is going to just absolutely suck. Um, it is so unrefined compared to everything that's inside of Max and Maya, and they don't, you know, they don't use standard shortcut keys. They don't do, they don't do anything that most of the other software packages uses. And so that's why Christian's saying the the learning curve is is so steep there. Now, when you say your 3ds max license is about to uh to run out you know um yeah i you know what i've heard i've heard that too that um ubisoft was playing around with it but the uh the people that i've spoken to at ubisoft um it sounds like it's only actually them playing with it in their own free time and that uh the studios themselves are not actually switching over. Um, you know, it's it's nice to invest in a company and try and foster that, but, you know, we're talking about uh, thousands of people at Ubisoft, um, which is too many to have everybody switch over to, to using something new. Like, that's that's essentially starting the studio over with nobody knowing how the software works. And so I'd be I'd be surprised if it actually happens. I'd be surprised. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna get. I'm gonna try and see if this works here. So I'm gonna get the player character. Get player character, and we are going to cast to uh, BP underscore character selection game character. And this is who's going to do that. And what we're going to do here is um, pull the variable, what did I call it? Nearest location. So we are going to get nearest location. It's and it's not just that too, Rich. It's not just that the seniors would be doing new to it. It would, it's that almost everybody would be right. Um, you got to remember, like, so I I know a bunch of people that are not not just junior, but you know, fairly new at the studio within within the last five years of being at the studio, because a bunch of them are former students. Most of the former students that I have, um, that have gone to UB, were not Blender students. They were students who were um, learning 3ds Max at school and learning Maya at school, and so um, you know they didn't really have a need to switch over. If that makes any sense. 
Okay, I think let me give this a try. And so when you have all the juniors that don't use the software and none of the seniors use the software, what you're going to end up having happen is um, not only can nobody use the software, but nobody can help anybody else use the software, which is kind of bad, right? Um, and so it's too much, I think, for an entire studio to switch over. You know, maybe if you were starting a new studio and you had a bunch of people that already knew Blender and were able to uh, to go mess around with it. Oh, oh, hey, 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 this is, this is working. He's actually looking at the things. Uh, let me go look at one of the ones up high. That's going to break his neck. Okay, so he's looking at each of the things here. His head's obviously breaking. I can't look at the top one. So I should avoid doing this, putting one on top of another one, because he never looks up at the other one. But there's the, the looking up at that, which is lovely. So, uh, RC, I don't know who you are to start off with. Um, but that's kind of something they've always done. Um, you can always just get a new email address and sign up for it, right? You, you don't, when, you, <laughs> when you get Autodesk software, like I use educational versions of the software, right? Um, because I, I teach this stuff. And so, like, my, my educational license never goes away. That is a permanent thing. Now, unless you're uh, releasing a game with it, you know, there's no issue uh, there. But, you know, you do want to be, be careful with that. Uh, okay, so what I've got here... So this is, this is actually working the way that I want it to. Um, I'm going to put a distance check in here. This is how far away from a thing you, uh, a mesh you want to be. Oh, that's right. What the hell is RC Demilia? Why don't people use their names? All of you raging so and so's and this so and so and that so and so. BH, I don't know who you are either. Five years ago. Yeah, so five years ago, obviously, right? The the license is only 36 months. But um, again, like, are you making games to release them? If you are, then you need a license, obviously. Uh, if you're not, you know... Um, is there a workaround using Max and Blender for license? No, no, no. With Max, like if you're using Max, you're gonna get you're gonna get pinched, um, and so you need you need to be careful of that. Blender is absolutely free, absolutely. The issue is that, again, if you ever plan on working at a studio that already exists, Blender is not the way to go. You'll you'll never get hired somewhere with Blender on your on your resume, um, and it's because they you know nobody wants to hire someone that they um, they have to train, so. Ryan, saying that you're just working on portfolio stuff, it doesn't matter. Just use Max. Friggin' pirate it. It doesn't matter. Like, they're not going to go after you for that. The only reason Autodesk ever goes after you is if you make money using their product and you don't give them some money for using their product. Um, and so, you know, go grab an educational version of it and, and you know, go to town. Um, that's, that's what I would do. Um... Okay, look at, everything is working so far. Uh, I need to change the clamp. So let's set this to 75. And then the interpolation time, I'm gonna try and set this to two. Let's see if that's any better.
So again, he is looking at... He is looking at things. No, education and student are very different, Christian. Very, very different. Um, student is a 36... Um, a 36 month license when you get it and the education version is something like a school or myself get where <clears throat> we don't have to keep renewing right i have an education license and as i am a teacher i can continue to educate people using that license without without needing to upgrade or prove that i'm a teacher or whatnot and so yeah they're, they're quite different So that's fine. That's set up the right way. Let's try and put this at five. So this clamp. Interpolation time. Hmm. Give this a whirl. So it's it's getting there somewhat. I've got him actually looking at things. He looks in more than one direction. Oh, that's cool. So you notice he won't break his neck. I think I'm just going to reduce... That look at clamp a little bit more. Let's kill it here. Let's bring this down to 50. Try it again. Uh, I've, I've never had to prove anything to anyone. There we go. So it gets a little snappy in some places. It would be nice to be able to interpolate that a little bit a little bit more. Who are you, BH? I'm not uh I don't know you. I'd like to change the interpolation a little bit, smooth it out a little bit. Um, five. Uh, interpolation trigger threshold. Oh, that's right, that's right. What's your name? I don't know you. I mentioned to my dad that you were here at one point watching. But he didn't know uh he didn't know who you were. I guess he's got a few customers and he couldn't think of who it uh would be. That's worse. That's definitely worse. Put that back to zero. I'll go space. So I think what I want to do, let's delete this for now. And the alpha here is something I can blend in and out. So I think what I might do is do a distance check. So see how far the thing I'm looking at, see how far that is from my current position.
Okay, I gotta move that damn pumpkin. Go do that now. Let's save everything. Yeah, that's it's tough, man. It's uh It's a new world we're living in, right? I find a lot of uh a lot of people are in that predicament and it's it's a shitty thing. I wonder I wonder what kind of state we're gonna find ourselves in when this is all kinda of said and done. You know, what kind of um what kind of world we'll be living in. Oh, uh, okay. Might lower the threshold a little bit more. Let's see if I can get him to look at that pumpkin. Yay! And now he looks at that thing. It's really cool when there's a second kid because the second kid is looking where the first kid is. So when I get close enough to this thing, he looks over at it too. Yeah, a lot of people are skeptical of Russia actually having something. Um, without the actual trials, nobody knows if it works or if it's going to do any harm. And so, who knows? Okay, so the alpha value... There's going to be a distance thing. So I need to get the distance. This is happening already. I'm doing this in my find nearest totem. So here's the distance right there. So what I might do, and what I might do is add another out from this which will be a float, which I'll call the distance. And we're gonna throw that in there. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give me another output here, which is how far the totem is from my player. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the way to do it. You just kind of plug away at these things. I mean, nice if you can get them on Steam and start getting a little bit of a following. I think ideally you want to do I don't know if any of you guys ever read The Martian when it was released, um, but the uh, the author did something absolutely brilliant when that book was being made, which is he he kind of outsourced it. Um, he, he put it on like Patreon and he started having people read each chapter along the way. It was almost written by committee where he would, um, he would write a chapter, put it up online. People would read it, critique it, and be like, oh, you know what? I really don't like what you did with this part. And if everybody did that and they were like, oh, I don't like this one part, he would actually go and change that part. And the end result ended up being a much more solid 
uh, novel in terms of content. And so if you can get that same kind of um, that same kind of feedback, that same kind of production um, going through Steam, where you know you make your your game um, early access and you build it with the community playing and the community putting time into it. Um, it allows you to kind of work out a lot of those issues, right? Where you start you start pinpointing things that, oh, okay, obviously this system that I built that I thought was going to be really cool, nobody likes it. Nobody's using it, um, you know, and it's just an overhead. I don't need it in the game. I'm going to pull it out. Um, and you might also find things, too, that you thought, you know, here's a system. I thought nobody was going to want this, and it seems to be the thing that everybody's playing with in my game, um, you know, that kind of thing can help you drive your your design a little bit. I mean, you got to be careful you don't get uh, feature creep or anything like that. But um, it is definitely one of those uh, one of those things that uh, you know that created by committee can work really really well for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, um, I'm spitting out the distance right here. And uh, I'm going to um, do the same thing. I'm going to promote this to a variable. Uh, actually, I already have that. It's just called distance. So what I might get, I'm going to make sure the distance is visible. On the nearest location, too. And I'm going to, in here, where I'm going to get that, um, I'm also going to get uh, distance. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to make sure I'm not using this for anywhere. Okay. Uh, so we'll use this as a set. I'm going to pump this in here. So I now have a local variable for distance. And what I want to do is I just want to check that distance here. So distance check. We're going to get that. And the idea is going to be to uh, lerp out between 0 and 1. Um, uh, int erp uh finderp2 okay current uh this is going to go in here I'm set the current to zero um It's a really, yeah, it's a really, really nice way to kind of, uh, to build your, yourself up. Um, okay, let's do this. That's how far things are. If that number is smaller than, let's say, 500, which again, this is centimeters. Um, can I interp here? Uh, ease in, ease out. Maybe I want to interpret with bool. Um, anim graph before interp with bool. Uh, I know there's a way of doing this. Remember which interp node I'm supposed to be. Blend pose by bool. Oh, that's a pose. I just want to interp floats. Finter with bool. Doing a timeline. Uh, 
Well, that's really unfortunate. Okay. Um. So I'm just gonna do some plugging away. That's cool. Those are both uh, both games that have a pretty heavy following behind them. So it's uh, it's likely if you do a good good enough job to start pulling in some of their audience. Although I heard SOCOM's coming back. I heard somebody was making a new SOCOM game. Hmm. I thought I read something about this. Yeah, there's a rumor that it's being developed for PS5. Interesting to see if that happens. It's interesting when games come back. Um, okay. Uh, I want to finterp. Finderp. Uh, Delta time, interp speed. No, but I need this to happen at a time. I need to initiate it. Can I add a timeline here? Add a timeline. Nope, no timeline. Interrupt a constant. Let's try and blend. Blend pose. I don't want to blend poses. This is blend. Okay, so maybe what I do, I don't do it in here. Here's my distance check. Maybe I just create a function here to do this. Uh, let's do that. Let's make sure that my distance check is set to zero. And let's make, um, yeah, let's make a function to do this. So this function is just going to be my interp. And we interp here. How am I doing my interps here? Uh, no, they're in my that rotation interp. When that happens, which finterp should work. So finterp, finterp2, and we are going to set uh, distance check, and the value is going to go here, like that. And hold on, I'm screwing this up because I'm setting this here. The distance check, I'm going to rename this variable, is distance to totem. I'm going to save that. And I don't want to use this. And I don't want to use it here. 
I make this is not okay. Let's rename this. This is look at alpha, and this can go here. Okay, so in finterp, look at alpha is going to get set from this. Mm -hmm. And here we're going to uh, branch. If true, we're going to go here. If false, we're going to go here. And we'll do that. Um, current is zero. Target is one. One. Current is one. Target is zero. Delta time, uh, delta seconds goes here and here. Uh, interp speed, I'm going to set this to three and three. Okay, and then lastly, my check is if distance to totem is smaller than. Um, let's put 500 centimeters. Do that. That shouldn't be an issue. That should work quite nicely. Uh, I'm going to go to my event graph and point to Finterp. And we should be good. So this should blend in and out to look at. It is not. This is the totem. Interp. This is the totem. If that is less than five hundred, hmm. The hell's going on? Yeah, that's the idea. That's the idea. You're not in a bad place, my friend. As long as you can get that following, as long as you can get people behind your product and loving what it is that you make, as long as you can garner that audience. And graph. I'm going to uh, print. I'm going to do this a couple of times here. I'm not entirely sure what it is that is happening. Well, dipshit. True. And fallacy. Hmm. doesn't actually seem to be doing anything. Uh, okay, I think I've got to set these. Let's get... Put that in current. Uh, recompile. What is my
look at alpha default. This should be zero. Cool, Anakat. Do you know, uh, do you get any of your courses yet? Any of your stuff yet? I gotta reduce that down. Let's try bringing this down to two and a half meters. There we go. So I think I might build an interp here. That was harsh, bunny. And kid, you pay no attention to that bunny. It's a lot. So I think what I might try to do here is interp the locations. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's not worth it. I think I'm about done here for the evening. His head does snap a lot, and I don't want that. Let's see if I can't soften this a little bit more. The clamp is 50. I'm going to try and bring it down even further, 35. The interpolation time, try and bring it down to 0.1. Let's see what we do. Well, and your your biggest issue, Bunny, wasn't that you weren't ready for the amount of work. And that wasn't it. I often had a hard time getting you to focus on what it was that we were doing. And I don't know if it was maybe associated to the fact that you weren't interested in all of the aspects of the art, which, I mean, again, no one, no one is going to be. Um, but you often did tune out when something wasn't to your liking. Which, you know, it happens to some people. I completely forgot what I was going to say. I think this three might be two. Well, knowing is half the battle, my dear. Okay, I'm going to load up the persistent map. I'm just going to save all this here. And we'll boot into the persistent map. I just want to make sure that I haven't broken anything overall. Okay. 
Make sure that the system still works. It seems to. Again, he's only moving his head right now, so it would be really nice to uh, blend this down a little bit. Um, I'm digging it, man. I think we're on a good spot here. I think I need to put a totem back here somewhere. Oh. He was looking up at the, uh, that's cool. It is, it is kind of neat to have him actually look around at things as he walks by. I'm digging it. I'm digging it a lot. All right, you crazy cats. I am done for the evening. I want to thank you guys for hanging out and watching. We'll uh, hit this again tomorrow night and uh, get a little more, more work done then. Um, hopefully it doesn't take too long before I get my rig and character animations back. Because uh, I want to get those done. And uh, I should really get off my ass and start making some totems. Um, I have about 15 totems to go. <sighs> Pardon me. And they are uh, definitely the, uh, the more complex totems, which is not going to be fun. And so I got uh, to just buckle down and do it. Um, Bunny, you're not the only one who cringes at a lot of work ahead of them. And so, we'll see what we can do here in terms of uh, getting these things done. And then that's it. That's that's the entirety of the project. It's good to go. Um, I ended up working on it a lot more than I expected to. A lot more than I wanted to. But uh, in the end, you know, I really did want to make sure that... Um, that... Uh, the project was good good enough to show students and that you know it did it did exactly what i wanted it to do was to make sure that um students are engaged uh while learning remotely uh, which is not an easy thing to do so um i ended up putting more time into it than that than i expected to because of that and so anyway once this is done i'll be able to move over and start plugging away on my uh start plugging away on my uh, mask project again which is where my heart is and so i'd like to go back and work on that so anyway thanks again for watching i'll be back tomorrow night at eight o'clock and uh we'll go and continue plugging away on this and uh don't forget to uh subscribe to my channel and uh hit that little notification icon so that you get uh, updated as to when I do go live and when these videos pop up so that you can come see them and uh, interact with us online um, as it's definitely a good place to uh, to come and uh, hang out and, uh, and get a little motivation help you get your button gear to start making some stuff so anyway thanks for hanging out and uh, I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow thanks again later